Welcome to Beyond the Lab. My name is Kate Stewart, and I am with the Office of Career Development in the Biomedical Research, Education, and Training Department of the Vanderbilt School of Medicine. I'm here today with Nikki Ching, who received her PhD in 2002 from Cancer Biology Department. Um, so we're glad to have you. Welcome back. Well, thank you for having me. Sure. Um, so tell me about um, what you did while you were here at Vanderbilt. Um, so I was here at Vanderbilt for about uh, close to 10 years, and uh, I spent about four years in Jin Chen's lab uh, doing my PhD thesis work on uh, receptor EPHA receptor tires and kinases and tumor angiogenesis. And then I completed a postdoctoral fellowship in Dr. Hal Moses' laboratory um, doing a project on uh, investigating the role of TGF beta signaling in the mammary gland stroma. Okay, so what has your path um, been since, since then? Uh, so I, I pretty much followed uh, a traditional academic career path where I went from a postdoctoral fellowship all the way to um, obtaining a faculty position at the University of Kansas Medical Center. So um, so when I first started at KUMC in 2008, I was an assistant professor <clears throat> in the Department of Pathology, and uh, I recently got uh, promotion and tenure to associate professor. Okay. So tell me about... Um Maybe something that surprised you in your first year as you transitioned into faculty member. Um, pro probably the the biggest thing um, that was uh, the biggest surprise was the fact that I went from being a bench scientist as a postdoc to becoming a, a writer, a mentor, a teacher, administrator, <laughs> accountant, as well as a bench scientist. So it was all it was having to juggle all of these roles and. And it took maybe one or two years before I could really learn to balance them out. Okay, so what is the percentage between how much you do research and how much you teach? So um, so I'm lucky in the sense that I'm in um, the Department of Pathology, which is a clinical department, and they don't really require all that much teaching. So I actually devote roughly about 50 to 70 percent of my time to teaching and about 10 percent to, I mean, sorry, 50 to 70 percent of my time to research and 10 uh, percent to teaching. Okay. Um, so what does a typical day for you look like? Um, so I spend actually most of the time in lab and, um, and so um, I was saying that about 50 to, 50 to 70 percent of my time is spent on research and um, as a PI, that's actually more than just doing bench research. It actually involves um, overseeing projects done by other people in the lab, mentoring students and postdocs, uh, writing manuscripts for publication so you can disseminate your research to um, the public as well as the scientific community. It also involves reading the literature um, and networking through conferences. Um, so there's, there's a lot more to research than just being at the bench as a PI. Okay, well, how is this a good fit for you, your role? Um, so I, I knew early on in, uh, as a graduate student that I, I didn't want to become a doctor because I didn't have that kind of mindset, but I was very interested in the healthcare sciences. And uh, being a PI um, at an academic institution allows me to fulfill that sense um, uh, where um, where. I, I feel like I'm doing something meaningful, like um, finding or contributing to new treatments for breast cancer. Uh, at the same time, it also allows me to fulfill my intellectual curiosity. What skills did are you using now um, in your current role that you gained from your PhD or postdoc training? So in my, my postdoctoral training, uh, I learned to write scientifically. And that's probably one of the most important skills that, um, that I'm applying as a PI because um, I re actually really didn't learn to write well until my postdoctoral fellow when, when Hal made me write my own manuscripts and he made me write my own abstracts and write my own grants for funding. And so that, that, was, a, that was a time when I could really learn to improve my writing skills. I mean, I'm still not... I don't call myself an expert, but I would say that's a time when I really learned to um, to determine what was um, clear uh, scientific writing and what was not clear. Uh, so that's one of the most valuable skills that I, I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so what skills did you have to gain or learn um, that you didn't already know before you started your role as a PI? Probably, 
probably being an accountant. Because <laughs> when um, when I went to KMC, I brought uh, my K99 grant, and and then they also gave me startup money, and that and together you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, and so it's almost like running a small business. And they don't teach you how to manage your money as a postdoc because um, everything's provided for you. Um, and so as a as a PI, I suddenly learned had to learn how to um, budget very carefully, um, hire staff, hire know know how many staff to hire and for how long. And um, also, I had to learn how to budget my supplies and equipment, and also my experiments. So that was that was a big challenge. Okay, so. If um, a current trainee was interested in being a PI later, um, what activities or engagements would you encourage them to do now while they're still um, getting their training? Um, I would say that the, the two biggest things that, um, that are important to being an academic investigator, um, it's really, it sounds kind of cliche, but it, it, it's still very applicable. And it's really building your publication history and um, trying to get funding as a postdoc because um, people are more likely to hire you as a faculty member if you already have a history of uh, grant funding and if you already built up a publication record. Also, as a faculty member, when you're applying for grants, um, those grant reviewers are going to look at your postdoc to see how productive you've been. And so those are the two main things that um, that you that I would recommend that any person who's looking into academic science um, should they should really build up those two things. Um, so I think that's where that's where um, good scientific writing. That I mean, you just have to do it. And I I don't even know how I did it, but it was just through practice, and and um, it was really is really, you know, giving my drafts to not only to my PI but to my peers. Um, and to other mentors who could really provide constructive criticism and say this is good science and this is bad science. Um, so I would say that applies to both um, grants and publications. And um, because when you, as a faculty member, the constructive criticism, um, you get you get a lot more of it. So you might as well learn to handle it now when you're a postdoc. <laughs> okay. Um, tell me about your work-life balance. What does that look like? Um, so it's, um, so I think the, the, the thing that I've had to manage is probably not letting work overwhelm me because I, you know, I knew going in that it was going to be a lot of work and there are days when I have to, uh, work really late or I have to, uh, work weekends or I have to just stay up all night to get that uh, paper in or to get that grant, uh, submitted in time. Um, but, um, but I know now that I don't have to do it all the time, and um, and I just have to just step back once in a while and just take a break and um, really learn to prioritize what's most important in the lab and um, balance that with the amount of vacation time I want to take. Okay. So what uh, words of wisdom would you give current trainees who are interested in pursuing uh, a, a path similar to yours? I would say... Um, Find good mentors. Um, even even when you get to um, a faculty position, there are, there's always going to be people who are more experienced, and they're going to have um, they're always going to know more about what the field is like, and they're and they're going to be uh, they they'll be able to tell you how to write you know write good grants or how to network, and um, and those people will be very important to you and and I have and I found a lot of good mentors at KUMC um, I would say that you know it's not important that they that they have to be big names or really famous or well established but those mentors should be people who um, who have the time available um, to make for you and who can who can really give you constructive criticism you know tell you again tell you what's good science and what's bad science in addition, you know, the, the good mentors will also be able to help you network. And it's not because they have an agenda, but because they really want to help you in your career. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, we appreciate it. Well, thank you. Yeah.